Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is May and I have been gone for a little while. I apologize for that. I also apologize for kind of the iffiness of this background. And if my camera moves, I also apologize for that. Right now I'm currently at home and I have to operate my lighting through a window and I only have one window. And the way my bedroom is set up, it's kind of hard to find a spot to film and get good lighting, so I do apologize for that. Uh, to kind of catch you up on what I've been doing, I'm going to do kind of an April wrap up. These are books that I read throughout April and like a little bit in May. It's kind of like a huge mash of everything I've read up to this point. As I always do these wrap ups, I'll give like a mini review and I really hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. I'm not going in any order. I could. Um, I picked all these off my Goodreads, so that's how I keep track of all my reading, but I don't really feel like going in any order, so I'm just going to pick up the top of my pile. So the first book I have here is Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I read this for class, and everyone was like, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, and I didn't do either. I don't love this book and I don't hate it. I see why people can hate it and I also see why people don't like it. Um, I really like the way it's narrated and the voice of the main character. I really like the way it sounds and it's very unique but like in terms of like what happens, nothing really happens and it's kind of like a thought process and it's just kind of like hmm, like this is interesting and like I could study it more I suppose but I don't hate it or love it. It's just kind of like a, this is a decent read. Uh, the next one is um, The Love Songs of Sappho, which I was super excited to get to, and they're really good. There's only fragments left of her work, so a lot of these poems aren't finished, or they're just like one sentences. And I read this for my Gay Lit course. I enjoyed it. A really fast read. If you want to check out some old poetry, suggest this. There's a lot of like floral themes in it, and I really like that. And then the next book is also another poetry book. It's The Wild Iris by Lewis Gluck. And I was suggested by my friend Adrian to pick this up. And I'm not a huge poetry fan. I can appreciate it, but I don't really like writing it. And I don't typically pick it up, but she said to check it out. And I enjoyed it. Uh, this has the interesting aspect of some of the poems are from the point of views of flowers and like their views on the gardeners. The only thing that really made this difficult for me is it was hard to tell which poem was supposed to be the flower and which poem was supposed to be the gardener. There was times when it was clear and there was times when it wasn't and I was just kind of wanted more clarification because there's times where I was like oh it's the flower how interesting how cool and then there's other times where I was like who's speaking what am I supposed to get and it's like different flowers and it was kind of confusing at times but I did like the imagery that was used and the poems were pretty decent throughout and I wasn't bored when reading it so I would suggest picking this up if you want to check it out. I don't have any AC on while I'm filming this, so I am sweating, and that tells you dedication to you guys, because, like, it's probably in the 80s right now, outside. <sighs> okay. The next one I read, this is actually the latest read, I know, I just finished this. It's The Tempest by Shakespeare. This was so funny. This is hilarious. I, like, when I was reading this, I was just laughing in my head. It's so funny. Shakespeare is so funny. The front of this was like, it's a great romance, and like, I was like, <laughs> there's no romance in here. I mean, I guess so, but I was like, this is hilarious. This is so funny. Uh, like, the characters, like, the fish guy, oh my gosh. <laughs> and like, Ariel, who like, has different names, I don't know, but like, the, um, the spirit character, so funny. I love it. Highly suggest it. I, sh I suggest everything of Shakespeare's, but... This is funny. Um, the next one I read is All Out. This is an anthology of stories about queer teens. I have a full review on this and I'll actually link it above. You can click the little eye that will pop up and it will take you to that review if you want to see it. I'll also put it in the description box. But yeah, I won't talk too much about it because obviously my all my thoughts have been laid out about this book, but enjoyed it. Do suggest picking it up. And then I read the last kind of like class book I read was The City in the Pillar by Gore Vidal. I enjoyed this. I read it for Gay Lit and it was interesting. It wasn't 
bad, but it wasn't like my favorite book. It was written well enough. Um, it's one of those stories where you're immediately like, mm, I know this is going to end really bad. And you just know, like, because the character wants something and you're just like, you're not going to get it, buddy. Like, it's going to crash and burn. And it's a sad kind of story, I suppose, but it was good. I do suggest kind of looking into it if you're interested in, like, queer literature and, like, because it's just kind of an iconic kind of novel like kind of stands out for in gay literature so and then the last one I only have one but I actually read the book before this but I just finished the inheritance cycle I read Bersinger and then I read um, inheritance which is the last book I don't know if there's gonna be more like it ends where there can be more and like I heard he was writing a book but I don't know if he's writing another book oh the author is Christopher Paolini by the way I don't really keep up with series. The only reason I kept up with these is because I already had them. I'm really annoyed because my other editions are a box set and they're paperback and they have beautiful like covers and I could not find the matching cover of the last one at all. I had to buy this which looks absolutely nothing like the ones I have. This is like shiny and like the cover is completely different. It drives me insane. This is completely different. It drives me insane and I'm not even like that big of a matching book but it's just Ugh. But anyway, this is his fantasy series. It's pretty high fantasy. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just like Tolkien, but like I haven't read Tolkien and I don't really want to because in all honesty, the only fantasy I'm like genuinely interested in has to involve dragons if it's high fantasy. Um, occasionally I'll get into one that doesn't, but dragons are like the main reason I read fantasy and these books are literally about dragons. The only issues, like this is a good book, but my like biggest issues is he introduces a lot of plot points that you're like, wow, that's cool, like that would be a cool like thing the characters have to struggle to get over with or whatever, and like it's instantly solved in like two seconds, and you're just like, okay, I guess I didn't need to worry about that, like, like literally the same chapter will be solved, and like, and, and like, a, like it didn't even matter away, and I'm just like. You could have done so much. You like set up such potential for like danger and it's just <laughs> and you're just like mm, okay. If you're looking for like a good dragon series, I can I suggest them. Like I said, it ended where you could continue like like a like when they do like the first series and then there's the second series. He could do that and I feel like there's plans for that, but I also genuinely do not know. I don't really keep up with that. I have talked way too much about this book. <laughs> that is all I read throughout like these months I've been gone. I will hopefully be reading a lot more this summer. I am already four books behind in my Goodreads challenge so that's great. Uh, if you don't follow me on Goodreads I'll link it below. I don't really understand how to follow people on there but if you follow me and it alerts me I'll follow you back probably. I don't know. I also have a bookstagram that I will link here and I always leave my handles down below in the description box as well and you can follow me there. I post there quite often. I post there about every day and I'm pretty active in my stories. You can always talk to me there. I'm always willing to talk. I also have a Twitter that's more of like me ranting about writing if you want to follow me about my writing or just like general stuff. I am active there. My Twitter handle is also down below. And I think that's like all my social media. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. I am excited to be back and I will hopefully have a lot more content for you this summer. I have some exciting things in the works. But if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other content from me. And you can see videos like this more often and YouTube is kind of being a pain in the butt so if you want to make sure you see the videos hit the notification bell and I will talk to you guys next time bye I don't really keep up with series the only reason I kept up with this is because <laughs>